Imachibundu Oluwadara Onuzo. How are you today? I'm very fine, thank you. You look gorgeous, by the way. Thank I like you. your dress. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um, talk a little about your book, your best-selling, I call it best-selling book, because <laughs> it's all over the place, The Spider King's Daughter. Mm -hmm. um, you're 22 years old now, yes. and you've been getting a lot of attention, media attention, concerning that book. Tell me a little, a little bit about your journey to from finding an agent to getting favor and favor to publish your book so i started writing when i was 10 um but obviously the novel i was writing when i was 10 isn't the spider king's daughter and um, the spider king's daughter started at 17. i moved to england when i was 14 and so i was in winchester and I was very nostalgic for Nigeria. I was always thinking of home. So I started writing this novel about Lagos and where I grew up. And the novel actually started off more about Lagos than about anything else. The characters were almost secondary. Um, so I wrote the novel and then sent it off to an agent. And you know, luckily the agent liked it and they took it on. Um, and then what happens is, I didn't know this was how it works, but agents then send it off to editors at publishing houses. And so my book was sent to my editor at Favour and she liked it and read it and decided to buy it. And I should have gotten her in here so she can tell you why. Um, so yeah, she decided to buy it and the rest is history. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm aware you're the youngest female to yes. be published by Favour and Favour. How does that make you feel? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel any hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't wake up in the morning and think, I'm the youngest girl. And obviously, someone younger is going to come along and dethrone me. So. Well, for now, you're yeah, well, for now. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, enjoy it. You're the queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I read one of your interviews where you said that um, growing up was very sunny for you, mm -hmm. figuratively and literally. Mm -hmm. What should you mean by that? Well, literally because there was a lot of sun in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> sunny. Um, and then, you know, figuratively, meaning that obviously um, it was a very happy childhood. Mm -hmm. um, so I had my siblings. We also had a lot of cousins living with us as well. Okay. Um, so at some point you'd have about like just like seven people in the house ranging between you know, me, like five, mm -hmm. and then like 17, 19, 21, mm -hmm. and all. So it was like kind of a Brady Bunch kind of scenario. And there was a lot of actually a lot of support from my siblings, from my actual siblings, and also from my cousins. I used to, I used to force them to read my yep. earlier creative books. Sit down, <laughs> read my <laughs> story. Uh, of course, it's demanding. Last bonds are precocious usually. Mm. So yeah, and they, they obliged me, they humored me, they encouraged me. Um, your book was um, shortlisted for the Commonwealth Prize, mm -hmm. and I know you were also longlisted for the Desmond Elliott yes. Prize. And recently, you won an award. Tell yes, me about that. The Bessie Trask Award, which is basically it's a travel grant for writers, um, for debut novelists. And so I basically have £7,000 to travel anywhere I want, which is very cool. Smooth. Yeah, very cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so would you say that um, living in the UK mm -hmm. um, made your publishing deal come out faster? Or would you, do you think that your location affected your getting a, a, a good deal positively? Because there are a lot of writers in Nigeria who haven't been published and yeah. a lot of them have been trying, trying, trying It's to a good see. question because I know a lot of my friends who are writers in Nigeria, sometimes mm -hmm. they can feel that way, that mm -hmm. they're being um, kind of marginalized yes. because of their geographic location. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say definitely being in England helped because then I knew what opportunities there were. So there's a, there's a book called The Writers and Artists Yearbook 
that kind of advises young writers. You can pick it up at any bookstore in, okay. in the UK, basically. Whereas in Nigeria, you might not have access to such information. However, the fact still remains that because of the internet, you can be in Nigeria and take advantage of okay. these opportunities. Mm -hmm. But then, it, I suppose it's more difficult to know about these opportunities. So, Adara Patricia Walbani, she wrote a book called I Did Not Come To You By Chance. She lives in Nigeria, she's based in Nigeria, but through the internet, she got her agent, got her publisher. And I don't think she met her publishers until I think maybe the book was published or something. Okay really cool mm -hmm. like that so you can use the internet to find those opportunities but um i suppose here as well there's the infrastructure there are the reading so there are advantages to being here mm. but not to discourage writers in nigeria there's <laughs> there's room for all of us so okay um i also you know, wanted to find out something from you. I know your mom is Yoruba because yes. you, your name, your middle name is Olua Dara, which is yeah. a Yoruba name. God has done a wonder, not God is good. Oh, God has done a wonder. Yeah. Mm, this is <laughs> a wonder. Um, okay, so, well, um, you know, in as much as we all say, oh, we are one Nigeria, mm -hmm. we are this, we are that. There's still a lot of tribalism mm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to getting political appointments mm. or, you know, you have, people have godfathers mm. or there's someone in government and the person wants to put people from his village mm. in certain positions. How do you think Nigeria as a country can, you know, sort of stop tribalism? It's going to be hard. But what, how do you think it can be stopped? Well, intermarriage is useful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, not seriously. Um, I don't know, I feel it's um, people who live in urban areas in big cities. I feel were less. Um, I've lived in Nigeria for a long time. I know, but I visit often, and I feel in in the bigger cities in Lagos and Abuja and Potako, people are forming more of an identity around where they live as opposed to where their ancestors where are buried. Mm. Um, so I do feel with modernization, like. Slowly, it's not the thing is we need to appreciate the culture that um that we have in tribes. So, for example, the Igbo culture that the certain foods we eat, certain type of dressing. But we need to get away from the ethnic st um, stereotyping. So, saying yeah. things like you know Igbo people are greedy or Yoruba people are this. Yes. Exactly. It's like no, there are people from every ethnic group that, that are, are these, these are not tribal identities. Mm -hmm. These are these are just you know, human characteristics yeah. that are found in every group. Um, so I, I think we need to separate what is culture. So I don't want to do away with the Yoruba culture. I don't want to say because I'm saying one Nigeria, people should stop speaking Yoruba. Mm. There is space for the Yoruba culture in the Nigerian entity, but there is no space for that kind of ethnic chauvinism where you start attaching character traits that have nothing to do with where someone is from to a certain ethnic group. Yeah. That, um, that I, I don't like. Okay, great. think about people that travel abroad and shorten their names or even change their names totally what do i think about them well, to english names mm. <laughs> what do I think? well obviously i did that like, <laughs> like, you know, like I, I have no judgment for them obviously i must I understand why you, you would do it mm. yeah because you get to school and they say what's your name chibundu mm. i remember the first girl i met and i told my name she said i'm sorry i can't pronounce that mm. okay. my dear you did not even try <laughs> but i was new in a new culture and then i used to have to make up a nickname on the spot hence chibs Chib. came along and the problem with chibs is it actually sounds like chips really? so lots of the time i Introduce myself to people and say, Your name is Chips. Your parents looked at you and they call me Chips. <laughs> I'm very confused. Um, we yeah, just kind of you know grew out of that. Ima Chibundu means knowing God is life. That's my full name. So Chibundu is already a short form. So why do you want to short short name is short form? Like, exactly. Chibundu is God is life. Um, and I suppose it's just like you know, I, I say it once, you forget. I say it again. I don't have any. Um, problem with people meeting me and not remembering my name the third time is like eventually you know you get if you become friends you'll know my name you know so like, mm -hmm. it's not that it's not an issue for me but yeah bye bye chips <laughs> bye bye, bye chips. boarding schools bye bye chips me. hello chibundo right. <laughs> nice now let's hear what chibundo's mother and grandmother think about her achievements so far And Chibundu's grandmother, Chibundu is a granddaughter, I like and is focused. 
she knows what she wants and she goes for it. And she is ready to go to the highest place and she loves God. Okay, hi, I'm Chibundu's mom. Um, Chibundu must be a very good multitasker because she wrote her book when she was supposed to be studying for her exams and somehow she managed to you know, swing both of it. Um, I thank God her book is a page turner and I find that many people are enjoying reading it. Like what your grandma said, she said you're very focused and, nice. <laughs> and your mom, you're she was my name too, the only, <laughs> <laughs> the only girl that has lived in London for over eight years and hasn't acquired a British accent. I actually like that about you. I, I, have, to say, I have it too. I can turn it on. Can you? Let's, let's hear you. Would you like to hear my British accent? Oh. <laughs> my name is Esther. I'm Esther from North London. No. Very nice to meet you. Uh, are we UK? Are we UK from Nigeria? Uh, Nigeria. <laughs> Where is that? Okay, Africa. <laughs> Africa. Wonderful. Africa. I love Africa. I just love Africa. So Chibundo is going to read for us. She's going to be reading from her book, The Spider King Cells, and I'm so excited about that. Are you going to read a whole old chapter? No, 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 no. This is a short segment. <laughs> okay, nice. Go on. Okay, and so I'm going to read from a segment where the Poka is um, doing his thing, basically. So this is the Poka speaking. The dustbin stopped abruptly, narrowly missing my legs. Clear from there, the driver said, banging on his horn. Are you mad? You know the sea road? My friend, come out or I will jam you. You the crazy? Oh yeah, jam me. Come out. I said jam you today. The man swerved into the next lane. Idiot, he said. Your mama? I spread the five fingers of my right hand and spat. Fire for fire. That is the only way to survive on the road. When I first started, I used to mind my manners. Yes, please. No, thank you. Like my mother taught me. But these manners were for a boy who was meant to go to university and work in a law firm. She never told me what to do if a customer sprinted away with my money. She never gave me advice on how to handle the touts that came here sometimes, asking for tips. I had dealt with one that morning, a slim, feral-looking fellow. Trading levy, he had said. I don't pay your people already. Now lie. I tell you I don't pay. No harass me. They know me in this area. Who are you? You don't know me? He was clearly a newcomer and attached to the main body of touts, or he would have called my bluff. Instead, he spat and moved on to the next hawker, trading levy. That's all. That's all. I like that. That's all. 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 That's all.